Greetings, Dr. Jeffrey Scott here. This is my weekend market update. And I'm still on cloud nine as Michigan just knocked off Ohio State earlier today. It's been a long time since we've won in Ohio State, like probably 20 years. Um, but I know some of you probably are Ohio State fans, so I'll temper my enthusiasm. But CFP, here we come. I titled, titled this um, week's uh, week ends presentation, Will Powell's Speech Start? the next leg down or feed a new bull. We'll talk about that upcoming Brookings Institute uh, speech at, when we get to the, uh, the calendar for the upcoming week. Again, my email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com and this will be posted either Saturday or Sunday. Sunday's 11 As always, this is for educational purposes only. Anything that I present should be taken in the spirit of, of education and not investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker. I'm also independent. And for those who've been watching me for 20 plus years, no, I don't have a website. I don't have a mailing list. So if you're interested in what I say, there's two venues and one of them is YouTube. I'll mention the other as we go forward. I use a lot of different tools in my daily trading. I paid for all those tools. And trading involves risk, and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. Um, my meeting's coming up in a week. For those that have signed up, I'm so happy that to, um, to see you guys coming on December 4th and 5th. My buddy John Person has a meeting on the 2nd and 3rd. I usually run mine back to back. Um, I still got spots available. Um, We'll probably be closer to 10 people um, live, which is fine because we're going to have a great meeting and we're going to really go through the things that I've learned over the last 30 years and a lot of what I learned from Ian and other folks and how I put them together to find setups, how I use seasonality, um, how I prep for the market, how I use options. The most important things would be money at management, putting it together with my A trades, how I like to play earnings if and when I play earnings, and then defining your own style, how I would go around figuring that out as well. Fly into PBI or Lauderdale, and I'll feed you um, when you will start probably around 9 o'clock on Sunday, and you'll get breakfast and lunch on Sunday. Then we go to um, Capitol Grill for dinner on me on Sunday night, and Monday we'll have we'll have breakfast and lunch and then a snack on your way out the door to go home. So hope to see you again, hgsidoc at gmail.com, thousand bucks per person. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, email me. Somehow I've gotten to speak at, um, at wealth365.com. And I mentioned before, I don't have a website. I don't have um, a mailing list. But I really enjoy speaking there, and I enjoy the tools. So it's, as you can see, it's wealth365.com slash Dr. hyphen Jeffrey hyphen Scott. Would love to see you use my link to register. Um, I want to keep being invited, and I never have a huge amount of people sign up through my links because, hey, I don't have a site and I don't have a mailing list. But if you could, I'd appreciate it. So let's go to the charts, and we'll start off actually with the spreadsheet. So give me a second to uh, end the slideshow. All right, so let's look at the spreadsheet and talk about the market that we're living in. So the first thing is, um, notice what the best performing ETF or market ETF is on the year. Beating the dollar now is the diamonds. So the diamonds are way off their lows and are only down 7% on the year. The NYSE, very broad-based. So the diamonds is 30 stocks, but the NYSE is like 3,000 plus, is down 10%. The S&P 500 is down 16, the Russell's down 18, and the technology-laden NASDAQ and the Qs are down closer to 30. So one thing that's happened is those indices that are not full of tech, especially application software and some of the semis, those other indices are actually outperforming. Now, the other thing that's remarkable to me is when you look percent off the 52-week low, 
which you can see on each of the ones that are the major indices occurred on October 13th. So we're about six weeks off the low, 43 calendar days, almost 20% on the diamonds. Does that mean we're almost in a new bull? Maybe. NYSE is up 17 and a half. Spiders 14 and 15 percent. I mean, Spiders 15.6. So Russell 14.2. And then the Qs and the Nasdaq are up as well, 11 and 12 percent. When you look at this, the things that got hurt the most are still down. Um, Bitcoin's up 21 percent from their lows, but their low on the GBTC was 7.46. Um, ARC is 10% off the lows, but it's still down 67% on the year. Uh, so you can see what's leading, what's lagging. And on this week, small moves, 2.2 on the diamonds, 2.5 on the NYSE, 2.1 on spiders, 1.7 on the Russell, and less than 1 on the NASDAQ. I uh, didn't want to repeat that twice. That was a mistake. Doesn't really matter. When we look at the markets in EdgeRater, um, the first thing you'll see is that on Friday, which is probably not a great day to look at because of the low volume post-holiday, three quarters of the sectors were up, 67% of the industry groups and 67% of the stocks. It wasn't a bad day at all, um, just not as much movement as we saw perhaps on Monday and Tuesday. We'll come back to buckets later. And if we look at one day, two day, five day, 10 day, and a month, you can see we've actually gotten to a much stronger period of the market. Remember, it was October 13th that we bottomed. And since the last month, we've had 100% of the sectors up, 89% of the industry groups, and 79% of the stocks. And you could see that, you know, last two days, last five days were all very strong. Warehouse report, kind of interesting. Each of these represents a week in the market, and this was the last week. So everything, well, there was a lot of positivity. I can't say everything. You had a blip here in the middle of outperformance, which you kind of saw the prior week as well. Um, and if you just look at EPS rank and gain, really kind of flat except for that one bar. Relative strength rank and gain, some of the biggest gains were in stocks that were bottom fishing or had no relative strength. The biggest gain on the week was in group D, which would be groups that reversed from the prior week. So not a whole lot of story here, except to say most of the market was up on the week. Now, we won't expect to see Hindenburg for a long time, but I just wanted to show you the new highs and new lows and com contrast the NASDAQ and the NYSE. The NASDAQ is still red here. You're going to be red here if your new lows are more than 2%. You're going to be green when your new highs are more than 2%. And you could still see here on the NASD that we have a lot of new lows. Hard for me to believe that you can be in a new bull market until you start seeing the 52-week new lows going away and the new highs emerging. So that doesn't look like a new bull. But look at the NYSE. There have not been any new lows over 2% for a couple of weeks. And look at this, every day is green. So is it a bifurcation? We're going to get a new bull everywhere but tech? Could happen. Kind of weird, but we'll see. Buckets. 83% of the stocks are above the midline of their Bollinger Bands. That's high. It tells me that we've had a, a run. Um, it's not excessively high. Here's what excessively high looked like at 88. But we could be trading tracking towards there. Now I'm going to look more at how many stocks are above their Bollinger Bands here and got very few. So I do not see a reversal signal on this, but I'll be watching it each day. It wouldn't surprise me if we get to the point on Wednesday where my tune changes just because if we run up into the Powell speech. Energy on the week, coal and natural gas, coal and natural gas. Um, natural gas has been massively manipulated by the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the fact that there's going to be shortages in the EU and England. And coal is a great replacement for those that still have coal-burning electricity. Not necessarily great for the environment, although it may not be as bad as some of us think, but both of those seem to run together. If we look at metals, silver, which has got industrial purposes, outperformed gold. 
Um, the other one up there was iron ore. Um, and you could see here that we're kind of at the same level was the low of 2022. We pierced it here and we're trying at sort of resistance now. Hard to be committed to some of these dry shipping container ships until you start to see a breakout. Now, you had a potentially a higher high here and you've had higher lows, but I think right now I think of this in this as a downtrend here. Lower lows, lower highs. Probably got to break out above 2,000 before me I, before I get too excited. Interest rates. This is exciting. The te, that 30 year up, excuse me, the 10 year up here, the 30 year down here have both sharply fallen. The inversion gets worse. The credit spreads are still tight. And as I like to point out, each time we invert, it's when we recover that we get a recession. And when the credit spreads are tight, you get this sell-off that occurred late 18 going into 19. Overbought, oversold. Here's when I start to think we're getting close to a oversold, excuse me, overbought reversal. Stocks above the 200. Going back now probably to fourth quarter of last year, we're at the highest that we've been. Um, and if we look historically, it's in an area where when half the stocks are above the 200, it would not surprise me to see the market soften here. If we look at stocks above the 40, we are definitely at a level where typically we see the market soften. And if we look at the 12 week new high, new lows, we're approaching levels where you expect the market to soften. So there are a number of overbought, oversold things that I follow, and they are suggesting that we've had a big run and, you know, the market might be looking for an excuse to sell off. Now, a sell-off doesn't have to be a retest of the lows. A sell-off could be down back to the 50-day moving average on some of the indices, which a rebound there might not be so um, bearish, but we'll take a look at that. News is a big driver this week. Starts with um, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard um, speaking on Monday. Um, expect negative things about for the market. Consumer confidence on Tuesday. Employment and GDP and PMI on Wednesday, and at 1.30, um, Jerome Powell not only gives a lecture, but also has a, a Q&A where he'll take questions from the crowd. So it would not surprise me for that to be uh, moving as well. And again, just like we saw, he tried to do um, at, when, the, when the FOMC met, as we've heard since, he'll try and talk down the new bull. Thursday, it doesn't let up. We got jobless claims and the PCE, something that historically the Fed has cared about. We got some manufacturing, and then we got Friday unemployment. So it's a doozy of a week for the market. Um, and again, it's a doozy of the week where we're approaching overbought by a number of the characteristics I've historically followed and more to come. Earnings calendar, still a lot of earnings this week. Um, I look through, there's some retail, there's some technology. Salesforce might be something that gives you a sense of what the uh, CRM world is looking like in our um, large corporation spending again. Now, last week, the expected moves were kind of boring in that we stayed within the range, except for the diamonds, no soccer, because they've been leading where we close right at the top end of the expected move. This gives you an idea of anything's moving way beyond the expectation of the market makers. So my thoughts, markets finished modestly higher on low holiday volume as positive seasonality offset markets ongoing slowing growth concerns. I was surprised we didn't sell off harder on Friday with China announcing higher and higher numbers of cases. Imagine if they're reporting record numbers, what they really are, and that could become a overhang. Dollar and rates have come down. That is supporting the move. And so I, th I think as the holiday cheer is replaced, by reality, there are potential pressures on the market from both data and the Fed, with Powell speaking this week and taking questions. Again, look for Powell to try and talk down the market. And then we'll show you the last reason of why I think this market 
might be setting up for a pause and that will have to do with some of the major um, moving averages on the indice. So I'm still in a bear market rally camp. No one can be sure one way or the other. I have several long positions, but I'm keeping plenty of dry powder on the side. And if it's a new bull, I'd like to see the strength in the NYSE and Dow roll over into the major indices. And if it's a new bull, we both, all of us, have plenty of time to make money to the upside. It's not going to go back to new highs overnight. At least it never has before. Well, 365 event, I already introduced you to that. I really hope to see, oh, it doesn't want to flip. Well, that's weird. Let me try it again. I don't know why that's happening. Let me just play around here for a second and see if I can get that to fix. Just do this. Show. There we go. Just to remind you, it is coming up in a month, a little bit over a month, 50 days. And really hope to see you. If you love to have you register and join. And just in case I didn't tell you the dates, I probably should let you know that. And um, up, 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 up. I'm actually looking at my calendar. It's the week of January 13th, I believe. Actually, check that, check that. That was February. It's the week of the 16th, Martin Luther King birthday week, which is actually a great week to have a meeting because many of us don't work on Monday. All right. And then the website where I post these, if you're interested, during the week, my updates is stocksanddocs.com. Uh, there probably is a mailing list there. I don't own the site. I just provide the content. All right. Shut that down. This is my lovely home in Santa Fe where I'll be going to spend the holidays. And let me move over my wealth charts. All right, we're good. Hit F11 so I get full screen. All right, so let's very quickly start looking at the software. We'll start with the major indices. So let's just blow up the spiders and talk mostly about them. This is a trend line that I wrote, that I put in, and I thought this was going to be the high. We pull back. We've made another run. There's a 200-day moving average just underneath it. Hard to see, but it's sitting there as well. And so to me, that's pretty significant resistance. A break above this, and I'll start to believe more, and I'll start to look back further and find out where my next level of probably resistance is and there's another 10 percent that we could run 10 to 15 percent if we break out there we'd have to break above this high and then the next stop might be as high up here so big line in the sand very big line in the sand if i had to pick on a chart where the likely place to reverse is it's right there so let's see what happens if we look at the cues, the cues are further away from that same point. Um, and again, that's kind of where I would expect them to reverse. No one says they have to get there. The diamonds, on the other hand, are what we want everything to look like. Because not only are the diamonds there, they're now abutting up against the August resistance. And a breakdown there will take us back up to here or a break above. So they're at a place you expect them to stutter. But look at this move. If that move continues, I get more bullish. The Russell looks a lot like the diamonds. It's just a lot bigger. And it's stalling here at the 200, but it hasn't fallen. The VIX, looking here at the UVXY, is down. Well, frankly, if we go on... If I go and look at the weekly, 
we can get a sense that we are at the lowest VIX in quite some time. And I remember my friend George Lee used to always say, when the VIX is low, look out below. The VIX is really low right now. And the dollar is stuttering here after a major sell-off. So low VIX, weak dollar, indices coming into areas of potential resistance in a market that is somewhat overbought. We look at commodities. First, we go over here and see that we're bouncing again at the lows from two weeks ago. Um, we've come off the high on the 10-year significantly, and that and the weak dollar are clearly supporting the market. Gold pulled back, rallied on Wednesday and Friday, as did silver. Silver's at the 200, and gold's got its 200 above. Oil doesn't look that impressive one way or the other here. And natural gas had a big move on Wednesday, gave some of it back on Friday. Um, but with winter coming, maybe we see natural gas um, get driven up, especially if the conflict in Europe stays. When we look at my weekly timing model, we are now positive on the spider for three weeks. So we're above the WMA and green bongo and this is weekly charts the iwm is now traded above one two three five weeks in a row okay the q's have not yet broken above the wma they failed at it three weeks in a row and so they are not in a buy even though the weekly bond goes green and we could see how the diamonds have just broken right through and again, are starting to look at the August highs, and then we'll probably get back to the, the, the excuse me, the April highs. So three of them are in a buy, and one of them is, I would say, in a hold, probably leaning towards weak buy, but the official buy won't occur unless it closes above the WMA. Market theme. Large caps and value have been the story all year. If we look at just short time, we're heading back towards large cap. And if we look at short time, we're heading back towards value. So it remains large cap and value, which is defensive. If I look at the hourly S&P 500 sectors, material strong, except not lithium, energy, OK, financials and industrials look good, as do staples. And healthcare has given up some, but trying to inch its way back. What's not working are discretionary communications, and the rest are in the middle. All right, so for now, I'm still bullish in the market. We'll start with the heat map of the S&P 500. And actually, let's start with the... They won't have one for the NYSC. It's too big. All right, let's look at the Russell 2000. Small caps, not as much technology. Okay. Now let's look at the NASDAQ 100. Large caps, all technology. Did you notice a difference? Yeah. A lot more green in the small caps and non-technology. When we look at the scanners on the week, Industrials have a big number on the week and on the day. Now, there's 2,000 stocks here, and all it takes is a couple of things to have had crazy days that are cheap. So I get curious. I hit the compare. These are all the different, and it's shell companies. I'm not even going to go further because these things whipsaw, and there's 1,400 of them, and they don't impact on me unless I sell my business to one which right now isn't the smartest. Healthcare, utilities. Now, healthcare has been showing strength um, up 2.7 on the week. But let's just look at healthcare and look at the different, again, diagnostics and research. That's a big number. Um, let's just look at those and see if anything comes up to the top. 
whoops, I went the wrong way. Healthcare, compare. Diagnostics and research, compare. Let's look at daily change. I've got a filter on, so let me take off my filter. And this is where the problem is. Um, it's not a problem, it's just the reality. Um, it must be up here somewhere. No, it's down here. And that was on Friday. So I don't know how that's really a 1500. So, although, yeah, hard for me to know what's going on there. But um, I always take those numbers with a grain of salt on any program. Return to subsector. But I can tell you that healthcare has been working for me, and specifically biotech, where I've got a number of different holdings. But you got to be careful because the performance, like the market, is mixed. Go into Wealth Scanner. Let's take a look at those ETFs. Let's see what where the strength is. So one mistake I sometimes make is I get excited by the order and ignore the right hand side. I got a lot of things of 770 and above. Um, so that tells you the strength in the market. I've had days when I've had a bunch of things listed here, and one's 800, and the next drop down to four or 500. So we've got staples are actually showing strength. We talked about that a few moments ago. Dividends, so that's certainly a value play. Spider value, value play. Index funds develop world except U.S., moving up well with the weakening dollar, I'm sure. Look at all these different dividend stories. Insurance, and then there's your health care. Muni bombs, bonds, not bombs. Bearish U.S. dollar, pharma, so there's pharma and health care. Retail big weekend for retail. So it's interesting, large cap value are up at the top, but so is Staples. So when I go to my CAT scanner, and this is really how I make the program work for me, is I can put whatever I want in here. So let's just limit it first to my combo list, which is a list of really high performing stocks. First thing I notice is nobody was four plus, and that's probably tied to the volume as much as anything else. Friday was a half day in the market. But I recognize the first couple because I own them. And I've been talking about one of them for a long time. So let's look at ASC. Ardmore, I've probably mentioned, well, I know when I probably mentioned it because when I went into it back in this area here. Um, but Ardmore is one of these shipping stocks and it's had a couple of big runs and so these are the types of things you want to find when they pull back to the 50. And that's what it did here. And then it broke out again. So this is one that's on a big move. It's got massive earnings per share growth. And it is one of the energy shipping versus, I believe, the dry bulk shipping. So it's a different type of a shipper. So Ardmore still looks interesting. It's broke out above here. So what did you have? You had volume, momentum, and a breakout. All three bongos are green, bouncing off on the relative strength and turning up on the OBV. A very nice pattern. The EMS went positive up here. The EMS also went positive here. And the EMS, which doesn't do much in chop, went short here, and the market traded sideways into the new buy signal. So what I don't like about this is, yeah, it's had a huge run. It's getting extended. But go take a look at the fundamentals. This is one that I've been playing. And um, you wouldn't, unless you owned it, you wouldn't have noticed what happened on this date. It was kind of a disappointing date. Why would you own it? Because back here, you had the 1750 and 200 fanning out in the right direction. You had a wealth signal. You had 
high volume and momentum coming out of a squeeze, the OBV, excuse me, the relative strength and OBV turned up, and it gave a very um, strong buy signal. Now, you also could have gotten into it here as well. When it pulled back and somewhere in here, you might have been looking at it um, coming out of the squeeze, breaking above the 50. Well, this day here sort of was challenging because the earnings were great. And then I noticed it traded way down, so I bought more. And um, it had a nice recovery off there. Now, this is not an expensive stock, and it's had a pretty phenomenal move. Um, you can go back here now, and you can see that it's doubled in the last four and a half months. CECO is a pollution control. Now, DCP midstream, I believe, is a takeout candidate, so I'm not going to get excited here. Um, Kroger's, good news and bad news is it's trading below the 200, which I don't like. Something's going on. I had momentum in a breakout on Friday, OBV in red and the route to strength in blue are both turning up. Um, coming out of a squeeze, 200 bothers me, but what bothers me more is it's got earnings coming up on this week. <laughs> Manchester United, you want to own a Premier League soccer team. Um, apparently, one of their big shareholders is bailing. I don't remember why. There's some controversy. The Gla I think they're the Glazers who own a bunch of U.S. sports teams. And so they're basically putting their stake up. And look at the volume has come in. I don't know how good of an investment a soccer team is, even a great one. YPF is a South American um, energy play. And um, giving you a nice little setup here as well. I believe it pays a small dividend, has an EMS signal, breakout momentum from a squeeze with EV with relative strength and OBV turning up. That's a nice one as well. Um, so many of these showed up on my review. I looked at a number of airlines this weekend and, um, and also Boeing as well. This is Alaska. Um, the industry group is really acting well. It's got to get above the 200 for my taste. I guess the one I put on my watch list is United. And if we can get through Sunday without many delays and storms, this might be an interesting time to be looking at United. It's above the 200, still has overhead supply. What don't I like about United? The volume. The volume is disappearing. I'd rather see a run up on good volume. All right. And then Boeing looked interesting as well. A breakout sideways move it, with new EMS looks like it wants to run again. Now, remember these last several days of weak volume. I need to caution my comment about the weak volume and remind us that it was Thanksgiving week. So, of course, the volume. What's going to happen this week? One might expect to see... Um, more volume as the pros come back to work. So I love it how so many strong stocks just come right up to the top by doing a very simple scan. Staples looked interesting. Now have they already run too far? Here's Kroger's, Bungie, fertilizer stock, and Molson. Beautiful breakout here. Has it run too far? Probably getting to the point where I get nervous, but um, still off the highs. And it's moving on the weekly as well. I mentioned healthcare and biotech. You look up healthcare and biotech. On biotech, anything with more than one dot, just A E R I buyout candidate. Let's look at healthcare in general. I think I have one of those. 
So when I see the dots, I know that I've got something that's moving. Just looking through here if there's anything else. We've talked about Lily a couple times on this report. And every time I say to buy it or to look at it, I would never tell you or presume what you do with your own money. It takes off again. Is it expensive? It's been expensive the last five times I've said it looks interesting. It looks interesting again. And then Cure is kind of cool in that um, they just got their second gene therapy drug approved. Now, the problem is no one knows what they're going to do with it when um, it's going to be a couple million dollars a year. And imagine all the prior offs and the uh, pushback the payers might try to avoid paying for it. But, you know, I don't look at healthcare insurers, payers as the better outcome, better health prevention companies. Their job is to be the smart people in the room and the stewards of the dollar. Um, and I, I think two and a half billion to cure somebody when they don't have damage and they can live a normal life instead of probably not having the same job, requiring frequent transfusions. Um, this one was for hemophilia, so um, bleeding issues. In the old days, they all got HIV because the plasma, we didn't know about HIV. Fortunately, that's not a problem anymore. And imagine if your child has hemophilia B, and now they can take a treatment, kind of like a cancer treatment, where you it's a gene therapy, and you could cure them. It's hard to put a price tag on that. We'll just have to figure out how we're going to pay for it. I think we're going to pay for it. And then we looked at staples. So Manchester, we looked at. Pet Q looked interesting. Pet Q, I'm assuming it's a pet food or pet something. Maybe it's an analytics company for pets. Who knows? Um, it kind of is an IPO that's really beaten up or looks like an IPO. Um, I hate buying things that are so far off their highs. Um, but at the same token, it's got a little base here. So I'll probably watch it. Probably wouldn't touch it. To be honest, because so far below the 200. And Copang looked interesting. Kind of messy that way. Let's just pull these things back a little bit. Just get this feeling that this thing is coiling and will make a big move. It too, way off of its prior highs. So there's a lot of things that I looked at over the weekend. Now, shorting the market is another way of playing. Um, and if I'm correct that the markets are getting into a overbought area at prior resistance and we got volatility coming from a Fed speech, I might be sharpening my pencil and looking at things that might be shortable. Now, saying that, I would also recognize that I don't short a market that's been going up for the last several weeks without giving me a reason. And when I looked at stocks that look like obvious shorts, there just weren't a lot of them on my review. So I will look at the shorting combo. If we get to a point where it looks like the market is starting to roll over. But for those who've been around me for a long time, know that I might also look at getting my list of contra ETFs out and putting them into some type of a watch list so that I can be monitoring them. And you could see you don't want to be in these things when the market's going up. They all were down a lot over the last week. But for example, if the diamonds roll over, then the dog, which is really beaten up, is going to start going up. If the Qs cannot break through and they roll over, then the SQQQ, which is beaten up, might be a place to look at. And if that SPY breaks down, then something like the SDS. Yes, as an investment, these things suck. And if you hold them long enough, you're guaranteed to lose. 
but let's look at year-to-date change. Short the ARCs is up 66%. Short the S&P 500 is up 20%. Short the Q's leverage is up 54, 56%. And, sh and short the IWM by buying TZA, which is leveraged, is up 15%. So rather than look at a lot of individual stocks to short, since I'm not ready to short the market yet, could be in very quickly, but I'm not right now, I've got these lists, I've got them in a real-time watch list, and when I see the, if the, again, extended markets, long run, holiday cheer is gone, approaching resistance, and Fed speak on tap. With some economic numbers, I think that there's risk here that we pause. If that happens, I might come back to this list. So on that note, um, if you're interested in coming to my meeting, it's late notice, but boy, do I have some goodies that the people coming don't even know they're going to get. And um, I still got two more packages left of those goodies. But, and I'm not talking about caloric goodies. I'll feed you plenty. This is education goodies. So hope to see you all um, soon. And um, if you're interested, hgsidoc at gmail.com. Have an awesome week and enjoy the rest of your weekend.